Hello everybody, this is day two of our How Are You Feeling Today, what would we call it, a series? <laughs> How bad are you feeling? <laughs> How are you feeling today, where well, we discuss all things, feeling? depression, anxiety, addiction, living with it, and being the partner of somebody living with it. Um, so, I've kind of already decided what I'm going to ask you today and it might be a bit tricky. Well, it's January the 2nd and it was a beautiful sunny day. Oh, so you guess what I'm going to call oh, it. And the first thing that was said before we got even out of bed is, Oh, what a beautiful day! Which it was. Yeah, but what happens to you? If I get up in the morning and I say, Oh my God, what a gorgeous day, look at the sun shining. You go almost, it seems like you're almost I spiral. cross and then I get this knot in my stomach and then I have to try and almost not be as happy as I'm being. No, I don't get cross. Not cross, but it's not, cross isn't the right word, but the tightness, you get tight, you get anxious. I go into a spiral. Anxious. As soon as the sun's out, I feel, I don't know if anyone else feels this, but as soon as the sun's out, I feel that the pressure is on to live up to what the sun seems to generate in other people, which is a mass of positivity, loads of kind of positive outlooks and, you know, the world is half full and full of opportunity. And it's not that it isn't all those things, but I just suddenly feel so not up to the task of it. I feel like I... So is just... it better if I don't say it's a gorgeous day? Well, what, what happened today was we... Um, when I looked at the sun, when you opened the curtains, I just thought, oh, Christ, it's a perfect day. And just that in itself is like it's a perfect day already. The bar is so high at the beginning of the day that, that if you're me, I'm not saying if you're you, if you're me, you feel there's no way on earth I, with my attributes, personality, whatever, or lack of, can meet it, match it, or maintain it. And so what I did today in a weird way was ignored your comment, which I must understand was probably really frustrating and then when we went out on the walk very slowly after an hour or so I grew into I sound nervous talking I feel nervous talking about it but I sort of grew into how happy it could be to be out with your family grateful for, for what you've got but I couldn't get there to begin with it was like an enormous um shot across my bow this morning the sun being out blue sky mm. perfect such a perfect day you getting up and yeah i mean i suppose yeah you getting up and saying oh my god look it's a gorgeous day go on say what do you do when you open the curtains you go oh my god it's oh my god it's the most gorgeous day look yeah. at the sky and as and i've and it's funny isn't it after 14 years of marriage i still haven't learned not to do that no but you shouldn't not do that no i know why should I you not do that but but i mean that's the interesting stupid when it when it makes somebody feel sad yeah, but, but you, i just can't yeah, but, but you I could mean, argue you were... then it's stupid. It's not stupid. You could argue no, that I should... I mean, I'm sure people who don't understand... I think there's a, an attitude to de being depressed or feeling like that is that, that you have a will, you're making a willful decision yeah. to be like that. Yeah. And I think the biggest myth around depression and any form of bipolar or anxiety is that you're choosing to be like that. No, no. I mean, we've had it with Kiki, you know, when she's been very, very nervous about things. There was a time where we'd both get frustrated with it. And it was only when we connected... And it's only recently that we've kind of, kind of come to the conclusion that a lot of my depression was around anxiety from as you know, as built in as a child. That um, left unchecked. That left unchecked. That we began to understand. Is, but the thing is, and talking from the perspective of somebody that lives with somebody that struggles with depression, is that I know you're not making that choice. I know no. because you, you, we walked. You got natural endorphins going, yeah. and then we had a hilarious time hmm. on the beach. We had a lovely. We hurling seaweed at each other and just sat watching the waves, and it was lovely. And it took you about. I mean, we'd been walking for what forty-five minutes, maybe, hadn't we? And, you, and I knew on that forty-five-minute walk, you were working it it all out. Yeah. And that's where the tablets have come in, I think, as well, that it mm. helps you get there. But as much as I know I you're not choosing, <laughs> as much as I know you're not choosing to do it, everything tells me that, but sometimes it just feels that way. I mean, I don't know if there's anyone no, out there who that. lives with somebody's depression. Sometimes it just feels like if you could just not, if you could just 
pull your boots up and just not feel like that. But I know that's ridiculous because I know you can't. But but I suppose. And it's... lots of the times you do. I mean, lots of times you push. Well, I suppose and you no, no. But I mean, the major thing for me is that it's a different approach to the day. It's like, I mean, I was about to say some days I wake up and I can run at it, but I can't. I, I need to. I need to get into every day by stealth, and I don't know what the stealth of the day is. Some days it's easier than others. Some days it's just being quiet. I mean, I literally wake up and I'm scared of the day. Not scared like, uh, you know, when I say that, I immediately feel like saying, oh, you know, I'm sitting. It's not like that. And I don't think it is like that for many people. But there's a blanket of dread. Mm. And you'll take the duvet off, but you, take, you, you, you can't take this other duvet of total, total dread. And it can be dread of the smallest things. And the terrible thing about it as a disease, if it is a disease, is that... Wherever you feel like you're beginning to get to grip or manage one part of it, it balloons into a massive shape over here around something else. And I it feels see that like, happen. And you feel like, mm. oh, you kind of get that bit in and it balloons out again here. And it's just, it's like that game as a kid where you hit one thing down, it comes up here. You yeah. hit another thing down, it comes up here. Um, but, you know, today, the easiest reason for getting over it or the easiest, you know, the way in which I found it the easiest to get over it was to live through you through the kids get myself to a place of not you know not you know not overtly struggling but there's no at no point am i not self-conscious of everything no. that i hate that i hate and that's why one drinks on occasion you know what would norm, most normal mm. people do on a sec the second it's a bank holiday go for a lunch have a couple of glasses of wine you know that all sounds so attractive, and that would be the stuff that kind of just just takes the edge off things ever so slightly. To I mean, you'd have a hundred glasses. Well, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be able to just have two. So yeah, so you know, and also it's what is it? January the second, Sunday itis. Even though it's a Monday, bank holiday Monday itis, Sunday itis. I'm sure everyone's got that. So you know, tomorrow is a big day for a depressive. <laughs> And if the sun's out, it's a bloody nightmare. <laughs> I love you. I love you too. But still keep saying, oh, look, it's a beautiful day. Even though I want to kill you.